You know, there's three squad mates in Mass Effect that always seem to get a lot of flack. But I'm not gonna stand for it today. Today, I'm going to defend them. These fictional, virtual video game characters. Beginning with Caden, and usually the thing that gets thrown at Caden is that he's either whiny or boring. But I'd have to disagree. Um, first of all, with the whiny, I don't think he's particularly... I don't get why he's be being labelled as whiny, whereas, like, most of the characters in these games can come off as whiny. You know, that they all have very serious troubles. So I don't know why they single Caden out specifically. I don't think he's that whiny. I very much... I mean, I get it. He basically has to deal with constant migraines. Yeah, I'd be fucking shitting my pants too if that were the case. Uh, it's very unfortunate. So, I don't think he's particularly bad in that regards. Uh, and also, I don't think he's boring. I think, especially in Mass Effect 1, you can argue in later games that, you know, his role is very much just... Hey Shepard, I don't like you anymore, and then he just leaves. And then he comes back and they're, they're friends again. But in Mass Effect 1 he has a little more room. And what I think he does, his role in Mass Effect 1, uh, which I find interesting about him, is that he gives you a lot of insights in human biotics. I mean, as Shepard you can play as a biotic, which makes it even more interesting. Because, you know, you're like a, a more you have like more advanced implants in him, and you don't have the same drawbacks as he does. Um, I think he's more powerful, I think that's established that he has very strong biotics, but, you know, the, the side effects aren't too pleasant. And Shepard, you're pretty much also very powerful, but you don't have much of the drawbacks. Um, so I think that's, first of all, that's very interesting. But, I mean, you don't have to play as a biotic. A Shepard, you can also just be a soldier. And um, what I think that Caden does is that uh, he gives a lot of insights into human biotics and the training of that. You know, when he was younger with the fucking Turian general who was, had a stick up his butt. Um, and it gives a lot of insights into that, that stuff that you don't really get much of a look into. And Caden is a very nice information point for that. I think it, it gives Mass Effect 1 very much is, you know, setting up things for the trilogy and it's a very human story i think it's a lot about y the humans that they focus time on and as the games go on it's a lot more uh, bigger in scale but what i think that kaden does it gives a lot more insight into the universe and especially the 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 you know the human part of it training is like uh, what being a human biotic is like and that's very cool so i think that kaden is isn't particularly boring or whiny um also i like his friendship with shepherd in one and also kind of in three yeah pretty much in three too he, he, he redeems himself i guess uh, so yeah i like the friendship that you have with him i like that he's gives you a lot more insights into a specific area of the universe and i don't think he's that whiny um the second which i guess you could argue is kind of I don't know who's more hated. That's that's the interesting part because fans seem to be very much divided. I'm just missing something. But uh, the second is Ashley, which Commander, if you're picking up a trend, those are both the characters that can die. Spoiler alert. Um, and the unfortunate part of that they can die, which is something that BioWare seems to do more, or more throughout the trilogy, is just shooting themselves in the foot because that they both can die means that they may or may not be in Mass Effect 2, uh, one or the other, which means that they don't really get as much development later on outside of Mass Effect 1 as the other characters, which makes them fall behind a lot, I think. But they still have redeemable, uh, you know, redeemable aspects to their characters that I think that's still interesting enough. And Ashley is pretty much the space racist. She isn't racist, no, she's just xenophobic but what i like about it <laughs> okay it feels funny saying what i like about xenophobia but know what i mean what i like about ashley is that um she isn't just bad just for the sake of it and i feel that bioware handles the subject matter in a very mature way let me just explain because mass effect 1 is a very as i said a very human centric focus it's very much from the point of view of humans and later on you know it's the the scope starts to broaden a bit and you get to see more insight into the aliens and and whatever um but mass effect 1 is very much centered on the humans and the humans are there's a lot of xenophobia that's hanging in the air in Mass Effect 1 and uh, there's a reason for it in universe and that's what I like about it not the xenophobia but that it's it's developed well and it is it isn't just thrown into the, you know when in fantasy games it's usually just like oh there's the, the the humans and there's the the elves and the elves are 
you know, imp oppressed and whatever, and everyone races towards the elves. What I like about Mass Effect 1 in particular, because this is the one that deals with it the most, that the, the feelings of xenophobia in the universe are very much... Uh, can be explained by previous events. If you don't know the first contact war, um, which basically the humans uh, started activating the mass relays and then the Tyrians stepped up and... The humans at that point didn't know that aliens existed. Yeah, maybe outside of like the Prophean ruins or whatever, but not like living, breathing aliens. And they basically got their butt kicked. Not really, I guess. It was more of a stalemate, but a, a war broke out between them. And, you know, it's a very... It left a bad taste in the mouth of the humans and the Torians, you could say. Um, so uh, there's a lot of people still living because the first contact war was like a couple of decades decades ago when you start Mass Effect 1. So there's still people alive that were around back then, most likely, which, um, you know, you, you understand why humans have some so sort of uh, animosity towards uh, aliens. Because, you know, it, it, the, the veterans might be alive, the children of the veterans. And it gets, you know, it gets better over the course of the game. It, it starts to, to kind of... Uh, just go away when people start trusting aliens more or whatever and everyone starts to work together a lot more depending i think on what you if you go paragon or renegade like shepherd can either be pro alien or pro human but yeah that's reason why humans in general have some sort of or at least are a bit wary towards the aliens and what i think is interesting about uh ashley is that she has personal reason a very personal reason to be to hold, to hold some sort of animosity towards aliens because her, I think it was her grandfather or something, he was the only human that has ever capitulated to an alien force and her family was basically just looked down uh, on because of that, though she had nothing to do with it and even his, her grandfather didn't really have much, <laughs> really have that much option. Um, but the game pretty much establishes that you know, Ashley has very personal reason because because of those that that first contact war because of those, that first experiments with aliens, um, she never really got the the opportunities that she would have deserved otherwise that she would have gotten. Um, and what I said, I think Mass Effect handles it in a very mature way because there isn't a particular right or wrong. Uh, they don't just say here's someone that's racist, let's go laugh at them. I feel like. Um, it, it's still wrong. I I usually play Paragon, so I s s usually encourage her to work with the aliens. But you can also just you know feed into a, <laughs> a pro-human thoughts. But there's not really. I, don't, I haven't played the the Renegade. I have to admit, so I don't know if it's just like comedically bad. But the way they present it in general, I'd say it's uh, very much left up to the player whether they will judge Ashley or not, which I very much like, because you know, it's, we can choose either Paragon or Renegade, and, and our, our responses to her uh, changed based on that. But we as the player can pretty much pass judgment upon her, and I can very much understand why she has those, she holds those feelings, and the fact that I'm talking about Ashley for so long, and you know, the, the, the Mass Effect lore in general, just shows you of how interesting Ashley really is, because she isn't just... Yeah, she has one funny line. It was like, I can't tell, <laughs> I can't tell the aliens <laughs> from the animals. It still fucking cracks me up every time I think about it. But outside of that, I think she's a very interesting character that's worth to be studied. Because she, what she does is just like with Caden. Caden is basically like representation of all the human biotics. I think that um, Ashley's pretty much a representation of the... Uh, animosity that humans hold toward aliens and it's just wrapped up in one nice little package for you the player to kind of delve into and like um, get to 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 know the the universe and I think that Bioware does it very well so I don't like people just throwing away these characters because they each have their own individual strengths and weaknesses and their individual insights into the universe and I think that Mass Effect 1, I'm talking about Mass Effect 1 and Mass Effect 2 and 3, especially Mass Effect 2, there aren't particularly interesting. Mass Effect 3, they get kind of better, but Mass Effect 1 is where they get the most, you know, uh, screen time, I guess, the most love put into them. Uh, so yeah, uh, interesting characters. I like talking about them. I can talk about them probably even longer, but you get the point. Ashley's not as bad as she seems, and you can make her better. <laughs> you can heal her, that's pretty much it. You can, like... 
make her see that you can make her work with aliens pretty much and, and make her see the error of her ways I guess but it isn't even she isn't even presented as that much of a bad character I guess except for that one line that's pretty bad but that's outside of that it's very much believable just not justifiable it's it, it's um there's like background to it which I like so I think that she's an interesting character which isn't you know, worth it to be thrown away, just like Caden, because Caden's just a good bro, as a, essentially, but, uh, yeah. But there's one character that <laughs> I am going to have a little more trouble defending, and that's Jacob. Um, Jacob is pretty much, I think he's the most memed on character out of the trilogy, just because he's the most special. I'm gonna call him special. Jacob is very much middle of the road. I don't think he's a bad character. I don't mind talking to him. I heard his romance was pretty bad, but in general, I think he's fine. He's a fine addition, I guess. His loyalty mission is fun enough, but... I what do I have to say about Jacob? He's just not really that interesting, in my opinion. He, he, that's kind of where Bioware dropped the ball for me, I guess. Um, especially because... You know, in Mass Effect 2, there's two Cerberus characters that they pretty much introduced. Two Cerberus squad mates, I should say. And those are Miranda and Jacob. And compared to Miranda, who has a lot of character development, uh, growth as a character, um, as, as you, you know, continue in the game, uh, Jacob just really gets left behind. And he's always just kind of a dude that hangs around your ship. Um, and he doesn't contribute all that much, in my opinion. I don't think he's a bad character. I don't think he should be hated. I think in most games that he would probably, you know, he wouldn't even stick out all that much. Because he'd just be another character. But in Mass Effect, which has a, a universe filled with beloved squad mates and characters, Jacob just kind of sticks out as being very much middle of the road. Uh, funny love, I, I, in, initially I didn't intend to be so negative about Jacob, but now I'm thinking about it, there's really not that much I can say about him. He's just kind of, you know, he's just Jacob, I guess. His loyalty mission is perfectly fine, I don't mind it. I think it's interesting enough, although it's not particularly... It, it's it kind of like, oh no, the, the, he rules over a fucking colony of people that have been forced to eat. What are like in, infected berries or whatever, like uh, the berries that contain hallucinogenics, something where I trying to remember from the top of my head and trying to explain it, something like that. It isn't. I like his loyalty mission enough, but just compared to the other characters, I think he's really not that interesting. Interesting. Uh, even compared to someone like Zaid, who is pretty much a throwaway character, I think Zaid has more interesting lines than Jacob, which should tell you a lot about Jacob. Um, I think he's fine. He's not that bad. He's just also not that particularly interesting. Um, so yeah, those, those are pretty much the three characters that I think that gets the most flag. Of course, you could also argue something like Javik because he's on disc DLC, or at least he was in the original, so you'd have to pay to unlock him, pretty much. But, you know, today's video was mostly just about uh, which characters the fan base don't like. And I think that uh, Caden and Ashley honestly should get a second look from most people, because they have more... Uh, more depth to them that then you can probably uh not, not per se depth but just they are more interesting that than most people are are led to believe i think by the you know the meme culture and whatever and jacob is just very middle of the road not you it's not really worth hating him he's he's fine you know um, but anyway uh, thanks for watching that was my in-depth character analysis on characters from a game that is how old? It's like 16 years, right? Uh, right about 16 years. Uh, uh, my character analysis for a game that's about 16 years old. Um, so yeah, thank you for watching. I Let me know what you think, honestly. I'd, I'd like talking about these characters, and I'm interested to hear what you have to say. Bye!